The new BYD SUV called the Seal U or the Sea Lion, as some people have named it, has now been reviewed. It's We know the specs now, we know what it looks like, we know the range, we know the battery sizes, we know the battery chemistry, we know if it's actually any good. That's probably what's most important, I would have thought. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. My name's Sam Evans, I'm the Electric Viking. I've been eagerly awaiting the new BYD Sea Lion. Turns out they're not gonna call it the Sea Lion. Turns out it has a significant compromise that I wasn't aware of, which the person or the business that have now reviewed the new Seal U, strange that you call the Seal U. I mean, what do I say, strange? Well, the BYD Seal is coming soon to many international markets, many countries around the world, including Australia, New Zealand, and other places. However, the new Seal U is not a sedan, it's an SUV, similar size to a Tesla Model Y, slightly bigger than a Tesla Model Y. And that's the car here that we're looking at. This is the car that I think most people would be interested in. I don't think people are really gonna to care too much about another electric sedan. Market's oversaturated with those, sales are really not doing that well worldwide. Look at the top 20 best selling electric cars in Europe, only one of them is a is a sedan, it's a Tesla Model 3. Same thing in China, same thing in the United States. So will the BYD Seal sell well? Probably not so well, I don't think, but this Seal U, that's a different kettle of fish. It will come with two different battery pack options. At this stage, it's only front wheel drive. Currently, that is for the UK market. The United Kingdom are getting this car now. Apparently it's already been delivered to the UK. You guys in the UK will be able to order these very soon. There's other markets such as Australia and New Zealand. We be it's believed that this will be an option. In other words, BYD are working on making an all wheel drive version of this vehicle. Currently though, it has some specifications which are a little bit underwhelming. However, the range is in my opinion probably the most relevant and important feature, and the range is pretty good. This is the front wheel drive range though. The range will be lower for the all wheel drive version, probably decrease range by around 5%. We know that the Seal U is coming to Europe probably by the fourth quarter this year. It's a definitely a rival to the Tesla Model Y. It's being built currently for sale in the UK, and at some point, probably I would guess in the second quarter of 2024, it'll come to Australia and New Zealand as well. I mean, realistically, we know it's coming to Australia because uh, BYD themselves have said that there will be a larger SUV, electric SUV coming next year. Pretty clear that this is it. There's no other BYD EVs that are slated to have right-hand drive and go to international markets. First of all, this car, in my opinion, looks really good. I love the look of it. The look is, in my opinion, probably one of the best things about the car, that and the battery packs. There is one big problem with this car though, and I'll, I'll mention that at the end because it's maybe it's not that significant. Maybe you'll think it's not that big of a problem. I think it could be a, big of, a bit of an issue for some buyers. Some people may be thinking that it's a compromise that the BYD have chosen to make the car this way, and it is a compromise. Anyhow, two different battery pack sizes. There is a 72 kilowatt hour pack and an 82 kilowatt hour pack. Both use BYD's blade battery, so both have lithium ion phosphate chemistry. And the smaller battery pack has 261 miles of range. So that's around about 400 kilometers. The bigger battery pack is said to have 311 miles of range, meaning 500 kilometers of range. In my opinion, that's the pack you want. 82 kilowatt hour pack with 500 kilometers of range, I should say. Charging speed. Charging speed is said to be 115 kilowatt for the smaller battery pack and 140 kilowatt for the bigger battery pack. What about performance? Well, performance is a little bit disappointing. 9.3 seconds for zero to 62 miles an hour, which is zero to 100 kilometers an hour, and 9.6 seconds for the version with the bigger 82 kilowatt hour pack. So 9.6 seconds, I mean, that is, I think, pretty slow um, for an electric car. Of course, the dual motor version will be much faster. That's the, mo that's the version I'm gonna guess most people would prefer to buy because at this size of car, this size of vehicle, there's a lot of all-wheel drive options. And people will generally choose the all-wheel drive option, especially in places like Australia. Charging, BYD say you can charge from 30 to 80% in 28 
minutes. Now the car has been reviewed on electrifying.com and one reviewer's Ginny said this, Bimity has big plans for the UK and the seal U is aimed squarely at the bigger sellers. It might not be the most interesting drive. In fact, they criticized the drive of it, but the technology is top notch and that interior will be enough to convince many buyers, especially if the price is right. And I suspect it will be very competitive. We don't know what the price is yet, but looking at the interior, I also agree with Ginny. I think the interior looks great. I think the exterior looks, the front, okay. The back, really nice. Interior though, yeah, like I, like Ginny said, much, much better than the BOD Addo 3 interior. A big step up. One of the things that I noticed in this car, it has a bigger infotainment screen. That is 15.6 inches. So it's slightly bigger than the, the screen you get in a Tesla Model 3 and a Model Y. Really, really good size. I think that's really gonna add a lot of value to the car. Now, apparently, Tom also reviewed the car from the same publication and he said this, remember those Nokia phones which had batteries that lasted for a week? They were powered by BYD cells. So are millions of electric buses and other EVs. The company is a battery expert which is now building cars while the rest of the industry are car experts building batteries. It'll be interesting to see who comes out on top. Yeah, that's a good point. BYD is the second biggest battery manufacturer in the world right now. That's pretty significant. And what's even more significant is the fact that they, they chose the, the best chemistry for EVs, which is lithium ion phosphate battery chemistry. Just in general, it's the best chemistry to get. So if you're gonna get an EV, it's definitely worth considering what the battery chemistry is in your car, weighing out the pros and cons, whether or not you should get that car if it doesn't have an LFP back pack. Personally, that for me is, it's not a red, it's not an absolute no, but it is something that I would think, uh, I would make me think twice, put it that way. So how big is this car actually? Well, it's 4.79 meters. So it's around about four centimeters longer than a Tesla Model Y. It has a wheelbase of 2.75 meters and it should have plenty of space because it's got a 570 liter boot, probably a similar boot size to the Tesla. 1,449 liters if you fold down those back seats. but. Unfortunately, the reality is here with this car, and I've got to point out this negative, it is a significant compromised car. Unlike the Addo 3 and the Seal, it has been built on a platform made for plug-in hybrids as well as EVs. It's not specifically a ground up EV platform. What that means, there is no frunk. In other words, you know, the front of the car, when you open the bonnet, there's, you can't put stuff in there. It's just wires and stuff everywhere. Uh, it's not made to have storage in the front at all. That does make me question um, whether or not it's going to really deliver on its claims. Now it may very well do so, but I think it's worth pointing out when a car is made, I always point this out so I don't feel like I'm criticizing BYD unfairly. I always point out and say, hey, is the car you're buying a ground up EV? Does it have a transmission tunnel like some Mercedes and BMW cars that are basically built on an internal combustion engine platform and they can't be bothered to change the transmission tunnel platform even though there's no transmission tunnel underneath it. This doesn't have a transmission tunnel. You can clearly tell that it doesn't from looking inside the car. But it still is a compromise that BOD have chosen to do this. Now here's what the reviewers from the UK said about the actual driving of the car. They said, it's rather unexciting. First of all, there is only one motor power in the front wheels, which has a totally sufficient 216 horsepower. So it's got around 160 kilowatt. Sounds like the same motor from the Addo 3. This sprints from a standstill to 100 kilometers an hour in about nine and a half seconds. But BYD has already indicated that it's thinking of introducing a model with a second motor, making it a wheel drive. In this class, that's what people are after. For now, the CLU is yet another electric SUV in which driving a car is more about getting to your destination than enjoying the journey. So what about charging? Well, 11 kilowatt is the maximum charging speed for AC. And like I said, already mentioned the DC charging before, it's 115 kilowatt for the smaller pack and 140 kilowatt for the bigger pack. So electrifying.com, they gave the car seven out of 10. To give you some context, they gave the BOD Seal eight out of 10 and the Volvo EX30 nine out of 10, but they gave the new Honda electric car, which just came out last week, a score of six out of 10. So it got a full point more than the new Honda EV. Either way, guys, 
I hope you've enjoyed the review and I've given you kind of a good summary of the car. Clearly it is something to consider. If you're gonna buy a Tesla Model Y, should you get one of those or get one of these? The only thing here is worth mentioning. By the time you're able to buy one of these, it's very likely the new version of the Tesla Model Y will be available, which will have higher energy density. It's said they'll have bigger battery packs, obviously redesigned exterior, uh, hardware four. Uh, it's gonna make a lot of changes to the new Tesla Model Y. So it's not like I can directly compare this car versus the Model Y, because they could both be a bit different, or well, they definitely will be different, at least the Tesla Model Y drastically different by the time this car hits our markets in the first or second quarter of 2024. The good news here is though, more options. More options and more choices means probably more electric cars sold and well, a better scenario for buyers. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What would you choose, this or the Tesla Model Y?